What's up everyone? Welcome back to Random 2 Rank 1. Now as you can see, there is a new season. I I feel like these seasons have been starting like every freaking month or something. I swear, like the same series, we've already had a new season starting. I feel like I explained this just like a month or two months ago. It's like, guys, there's another new account. Okay, it's the same MMR, etc. Well, once again, I am still at the same MMR. I think it was 6,040 something. Now, Blizzard did mess up the ladder, so the ladder stopped sorting by MMR. That's a bug that happens every couple months. It's a, it's a seasonal festivity on the ladder, if you will. But I think we still need roughly 100 MMR more to be rank 1. Obviously, we can still tell how much MMR everyone has. Now, I'm going to be a little rusty. You guys haven't seen me play StarCraft 2 in over a week. I did the holdout challenge, and I played a little zero space. But now, it's time to get back into shape. So, let's begin. All right, the first game of the day is going to be against Rocker. All right, now he's already played a couple games as he has his Master League border. Now, just so you guys don't get confused, um, I think, how long is it? I think the first week of a new season, Grandmaster isn't open. So I'm not, I'm not actually sure when, you know, what the start date was of the new season. Like the new season could have been, <laughs> nice, <laughs> there you go. Uh, the new season could have been going on for three days or one day. Like I said, I haven't actually played for a little bit myself. Um, uh, even if I get my main race in cheese. <laughs> oh no, definitely didn't get my main race. I would never do that. <laughs> Actually, uh, I think the game he's referring to was the, um, what is it? The factory cheese. The flying factory cheese. Because I'm not on a 6k account. 5k account. How do you know? I'm unranked. He can't tell. That obviously, he knows the account already. Now, what am I going to do against him? Hmm... I feel like I have a lot of stuff to say. You know, it's kind of funny because I've made a couple of videos. But since I haven't made one of my usual videos, I kind of feel like I haven't talked to you guys for a while. I know that sounds crazy, but since this is like my normal jam, just doing like some kind of weird StarCraft 2 ladder series instead of like the holdout challenge or other games like Zero Space, uh, I do feel like I haven't talked to you guys for a while. So I want to say a lot, but I also need to figure out what build I want to do. Um... I, I, the first thing that popped up into my mind was a Thor build. I, I do have an idea for a build. Um, I, I, it's always funny because I'm trying to get rank one, right? But also, whenever I get Terran, I just, I feel like something just triggers inside me. It's like you have to do something incredibly stupid. Oh, he almost lost that. Now, I did have a build that I actually made happen in the global finals. I think that was two years ago, roughly. Uh, I played against Cyan, which was the best Chinese Protoss player at the time. Right now, I think he's the second best Chinese Protoss player. Um, where I went for a double gas opening like this. And then when I saw my opponent was going for a Stargate, I went for a follow-up Thor drop with SEVs, and it actually worked. That was freaking insane. You now my Discord community made a lot of uh, memes about it because it was like... The, the, the first two games were like super long macro games, like actually just eternal. And then in the second game, I even beat carriers, which is pretty crazy. Because uh, usually I didn't have the most success against carriers. And then again, and then in game three, when it was 1-1, I played freaking Thor drop. And my, my chat made a bunch of memes about it. Like, frick, yeah, Thor. <laughs> he thermal after beating carrier. I think that SUV is going to be a little bit too late. So I'll send another one to make the command center just in case. Not going to make the biggest difference, but I do like my timings to be clean. Okay, so this looks like he wants to go across the map with his adept. Oh, no, he's... There's no... Huh, okay. The reason why I said that is because he made a battery in the main, which is usually what you do when you want to go across the map with an adept. So I am a little uh, surprised by this. Now, there's a stalker, which means the Stargate is less likely. Okay, I, I actually have a freaking insane build in mind that I kind of want to show you guys. So I I'm not, I I've showed it a couple times on the YouTube, but not too often. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is the best opening for this, actually. But for a while, I was playing mech against Protoss. Mech against Protoss always really sucks. I, I'm always just honest about this, you know? I love to make weird stuff work, but Mech against Protoss is just awful. But I had, like, the Thor Banshee composition for a while that was just, like, a very beautiful A-move composition that it, it always worked if your opponent didn't know what to do, which most of the... Oh, he's actually s sending two Stalkers across the map, which most of the times they didn't because it's so unusual to go for Thor Banshee. N normally, this would be GG, by the way, but uh, I, I don't know. For some reason, I'm in a good mood. I feel like we're going to have a shot here, but this normally would definitely be reason enough for me to leave the game. Like, this is so much damage. This happened in the pro game. The Terran would definitely leave, I think. Now, not the best micro by him so far, so he is going to lose uh, one Stalker, at least. He's actually going to lose both Stalkers here, unless he recalls that one. Okay, so in the end, it ended up being pretty good for me. Can I block it? No, I almost got it there. Let's see, he's going to try to run past. He is not quite going to run past. All right. Guess we'll just have to deal with the amount of damage we took and transition. 
Actually, I think I'm going to send this Raven across. Just to try and get some more damage on his side. Now, I'm really glad he lost at least a Stalker. Because otherwise, it would have just been perfect for him. And now, at least it feels to me that I've done something back. Like, it's not this... Oh, wait, actually, there's a battery in the main. Uh, I guess I'll have to go for the natural then. Auto turrets don't do anything against the battery. I would have to wait for two turrets every single time, which is just... It's way too much time to waste, pretty much, right? This SUV is not doing anything right now. I hope he doesn't have a third base yet, because if he does, we are definitely uh, in serious need of some damage. He doesn't have this one, which I think is the most common option. So that is already a little bit of a good sign for us. Let's see if I can get over here into the natural. He's making extra gases, which makes it look that he's uh, like he's going to play Colossus here. Uh, or at least some kind of robo-based stuff. I guess technically it could be Storm, but Storm is just not as popular these days. Um, the, I, mean, I think it's been a while since Storm was as popular, to be honest, as, uh, as Colossi. Now, I almost have another turret again. I'm just going to wait to drop it. Let's see, is he going to move? Oh, he, he, he didn't move. He sent his stalkers. Okay, then I'll just target one pro, maybe second one. Not quite a second one. He's not attacking me with his units, so perhaps I can get a lot of damage on with these two Banshees. I kind of thought that I would be defending with everything I have since I didn't see his stalkers. Kind of gives me the vibe that he was about to blink 10 of them into my main base, but it didn't really seem to be the case. Now, I am a little scared to execute this build because this build with the Thor Banshee was typically very momentum-based. So, yeah, clearly I don't really have a lot of momentum going for me in this game, right? All I did was take a lot of damage and then I think I killed three probes? Four probes. I got four probes with the Raven. All right, I mean, not bad. But I still have to make an armory and extra factories and stuff, and that is freaking expensive. Also need to make an engineering bay at some point. I, I, I guess I could stop making tanks now. Yeah, I'll, make, I'll stop making marines and I'll stop making tanks. And I'll just go for the transition right away. I'm going to get a second factory here. Hopefully, these two banshees can do a little bit of damage to bring us back into the game. That would be nice. Get an engineering bay here. And then my setup is pretty much complete. And now I can make as many units as I want. He did move the stalkers away. Let's see. There is a battery now. Yeah, so I Wait, that could be perfect. If he moved all of his batteries away or all of his stalkers away, thinking... Oh, no, he was on it. Okay, I guess he saw my banshees uh, back in my main base, probably. I don't think he would have responded that fast with the observer. So he probably saw them back in my main base somewhere. Which makes it very tempting for me to bring this raven back, actually. So I can uh, kill the observer a little easier. Let's see. Uh, where do I want my turrets? Probably around my base a little bit. I'm going to get... Now, uh, ba Banshee speed is going to be a little later. I do like Banshee speed with this, but keep in mind I have to start two, f you know, two freaking Thors and the upgrade. Which I can, if I land this one, I can literally barely afford. Maybe I can start the upgrade before the second Thor because uh, my factory is a little late here. There we go. I mean, the timing still looks pretty clean, I have to admit. Oh, he's going to go for the blink on top. Yeah, that's a really good move here. N normally... I wouldn't 100% be on board with this. Uh, but the thing is, I'm not making any more tanks. I, I actually think it could even be seen as a mistake uh, if he didn't realize that I was going for uh, Thors. But since I'm making Thors, this is going to put us in a very rough spot there. So that sucks for us. I'm actually going to have to wait for these hacking chonkers to finish because I don't really have anything else going for me. Let's see. Wait, that robo base is really late, huh? Why is that robo base so late? I am not quite sure, actually. He has a lot of probes here as well. I, th I think he's... I'm not quite sure if he's scared or if his, his build is a little messed up. Like, okay, so that is his third base. I feel like that that could be his fourth base. I, I Like, since his robo base is late, I almost feel like it should be his fourth base. But since he had the gases so early, I'm getting a little confused here. I think we're just going to turn our brains off a little bit. Uh, and just look at what we see instead of trying to make any prediction. So now he sees the Thor. Uh, if I was him right now, I would just stop making gases, get a million gateways and make charge slots and, uh, and stalkers. And I guess you could make immortals as well. Immortals are always going to be quite good against Thors. Uh, the biggest mistake that people always make against this composition, pretty much in the main thing uh, or the main reason I feel like this strategy ever worked is because against mech, Archons are typically ridiculously overpowered. Like tanks don't deal damage against Archons, so they're super strong. Uh, but if you make Archons against someone only making Thors, then all of a sudden it's pretty good for me. And let's see, can, can I get a nice position actually here in between the mineral line? Doesn't look like it's going to be that nice, no. Okay, so I'm going to lose these Hellions. Um, not really a big deal, of course, but I was kind of hoping I would be able to get some more damage in there. Now, since my opponent is already building uh, charge slots, and as you can see, a lot of gateways around, I am getting a little scared. I'm going to counterattack with these. going to 
probably get blue flame. I think blue flame would be pretty nicer. I'm trying to make as big of a wall as possible to prevent getting A moved, because that's usually what happens when you play mech. You just get A moved by a big Protoss army that counters yours. That's the reason why people don't play mech usually. But if I can get like a big enough wall, maybe there is like a small chance. Gotta make sure they're all morphed into Hellbands. Banshee speed is not gonna finish anytime soon. That is, oh, that's a bad misclick. I thought I uh, double clicked the Marines there, but I clicked the SCVs on accident. Yeah, he's not mining from that. He's making a Templar art. Wait, I actually really like seeing that. He's making the Templar archives. That's what I was talking about. He does have a lot of stalkers, you know. Wait, did he just start the... Oh, he did start an upgrade. Okay, so maybe he's going to go for Archons here. If he's going to go for Archons, that is the best news we have received in quite a while. I feel like besides that, this game has been very, very tough in... Uh, yeah, most elements, really. Let's see. Can I escape those? Looks like I'm going to be able to escape. Stalkers are back enough. I'll even be able to snipe that probe over here. Oh, there's a gold base. Ah, so he did have another base. Okay, so I wasn't I wasn't crazy. I just didn't quite realize what was going on. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we just have one strategy here, guys. It's actually not going to change at all. I am going to have to max out and A-move him. It's actually pretty funny. I feel like normally that would change entirely what I'm going to do, but I... I really don't have another option, regardless of how much economy he has. All I can do is max out and then hope I can beat him with a massive army, and that's that's pretty much it. I'm gonna harass him with a couple of these. Uh, I, no, I don't think I can afford it to sacrifice Hellbats, right? Because I'm gonna need those against uh, all the Zealots, I think. Let's see how much damage we can do here. It's, it's actually not that mined out yet. It's it's Yeah, I, I would say it's okay. Our opponent is still not maxed, which is freaking crazy. He's had a gold base all this time. This entire game has been going bad for us. And somehow I'm almost maxed out and he isn't. That's that's pretty freaking insane. Let's see. Okay, so that's a really big army. I need a couple more Hellbats over here. I really hope he's going to go for a big attack in here because I'm, I'm going to all in him anyway. So if he attacks me first, that can only be good for us, right? Yeah, so he is going to go for it. I have a lot of Hellbats in the choker. I'm just going to bring these Banshees back as well. Yeah, this is pretty much the perfect fight. Look at this. All the Zealots were on top of those. I, oh, the Raven ability barely didn't, uh, you know, finish there or cast i should say and that was a pretty good fight for us now the problem is our opponent is so freaking rich i'm not even sure if i can uh you know be happy with that trade like i think i need like a crushing fight and ideally somewhere near his base because if it's not near his base like this i can't capitalize on it at all that's also a downside of mech with mech you have to mold your army composition perfectly so now i lost the hellbands i have to remake the hellbands like thor's will get absolutely annihilated by oh that's bad by a bunch of zealots that means he has another observer somewhere here probably i do have uh wait okay that this probably tells me how many gateways he has right i think it was about 12. if you notice at the movement of those zealots oh wait did he oh he killed my engineering bay i guess by attacking the wall okay that's kind of funny i didn't see that coming whatsoever yeah these banshees have not been able to do anything so far that is quite annoying is he finally going to be able to get some damage here? I'm sure that he is close uh, to my base. Exactly. He must be attacking somewhere. I haven't seen his units forever. The fact that I can't make this into a planetary is actually a massive deal, by the way. Like, that absolutely sucks for me. I'm going to send that one over here. I am approaching max now, which is nice. There are a couple cannons here, but I should be able to AFK my banshees in a pretty annoying spot. His army is not there anymore, and I think the time has gone for us to just absolutely send it right now, because I don't really have anything else besides just going for a really big attack with my Thor Banshee. Now, our opponent, once again, still not maxed before us, which is pretty crazy. That is going to start. Uh, is there anything else I can do? I think I can make more starports. I know it sounds a little crazy uh, with how ineffective the Banshees have been, but I don't think there really is another late game for me than that. Okay, so his army doesn't look that big. Um, if I was him, I'd probably go for a base trade, so that could be uh, a pretty realistic scenario, of course. Let's see. There's a Disruptor there. That first shot is going to miss. I need some of these uh, Hellbats in the back, absolutely, else we're going to be in trouble. Maybe I could just kill these rocks. Let's see. He's going to hit two Thors. You, you can absolutely do nothing against Disruptors, by the way. Like, for the most part, I should probably just be ignoring them. Like, I know there is... And maybe I could make drilling claws here. I know there's like a little bit of micro you can do, but realistically, uh, they're going to hit every single time and probably hit multiple Thors too, like that. Like, I can't even... Yeah, that was probably the best split I possibly could have done, uh, and it still didn't do anything, right? Now, it's possible he lost a couple of his units already. I'm going to drop a couple of mules um, just to try and repair these stores up slowly, I suppose. Maybe I can hunt him with the Banshees. I feel like that wouldn't be that crazy of an idea. I also wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a recall at some point, right? So that's going to die as well. Obviously, can't do anything about that. This is now going to turn into a planetary, which is quite nice. 
Okay, there we go. That's another uh, Thor dying. Sadly, can't do anything about that. Now, I have 150 supply left, which is really not that bad. Our opponent is 100% going to be maxed by the time we fight. So a lot of this is going to come down to how well he manages this. Because he could totally be fighting too early. Uh, if he fights too early, that's that's pretty much the only shot we have. If he saves enough units and fights at the right time, he will win this game. That That is just a guarantee. I mean, I'm just going to be honest about this. Oh, he did feel that disruptor shot. It is quite nice, actually. Uh, but yeah, if he attacks at the right time, there's, there's nothing more that I can do in this game. I do have a couple Thors. Let's see. Okay, so he's going to come up here now. That kind of surprises me, actually. I really thought that maybe he would have... Uh, oh, that is a really bad blink. Oh, my goodness. He just gave me all of those stalkers for free, pretty much. That is quite nice. Because I, I wasn't going to kill every any unit at all until he blinked on top. So I definitely appreciate that. But he must have an observer here, right? He's not killing the Banshee. Wait, does he somehow not have an observer? That would be quite funny, to be fair. Okay, let's see. Um, oh, I think that's a DT, right? I hear a DT swiping. Yeah, DTs are swiping my units. And that is going to be it. 144 supply. Actually, not that bad. All right. Yeah, we did way better here than I thought. Now, obviously, I, I did mention it a little bit. Like, I always like playing around with it, right? But mech against Protoss is just not not great at all. I think this is the single best mech strategy there is against Protoss. And I tried my best. So, obviously, you have to give the shout out to Rooker there for countering it. You know, I do have to say, he took this so fast. And I think maybe... Uh, I underestimated him a little bit because I saw that his build was not completely lined up and I kind of thought to myself he probably just didn't do a build that good right I, I feel like if I would play against the best Protoss players in the world I would definitely realize something was going on but here maybe I underestimated him a little bit which is on me uh, and this is probably the perfect strategy against my mech build as well because this gave him so many zealots I'm actually quite proud of the game we managed to create after this because here this game should be 100% over unless I find this that is in the next one or two minutes like seven to eight minutes it should be 100 percent over uh, but we still made quite the game out of this look at this we are 25 supply down we are down two bases including a gold base he has double force the perfect composition and we still made a game out of this actually gonna clap for this pretty happy with this one fantastic warm-up game let's go for game number two all right the second game is going to be against jason now i do have to admit sometimes i do forget that i'm trying to get rank one and i just end up doing weird stuff like the last game and i'm like you know what maybe i should actually be doing good strategies instead but you guys know me i'm always going to be doing weird stuff especially if i get terran and to be honest also if i get zerg these days and protoss ah what am i talking about now what am i going to be doing against jason here oh wait i, I actually know what i want to do uh, this is going to be a cool experiment for me because recently um i think i did talk about the cyclones before how i they ended up being good in the matchup that i didn't expect them in right that they're now good in tvt well, I didn't expect them to be good in TVT, but that is the one matchup where they're, uh, you know, shining. And I haven't really studied the build orders that the best Terran players in the world do. But from like, you know, a spectator POV, I mean, you guys know what it's like when you're watching a stream, like half-eyed, you're like all tabbing to do something else. Or you're playing a game and you open the stream sometimes, right? That's pretty much how I've been watching uh, Professional StarCraft these last couple of weeks. Um, and I noticed that they make about... Eight Cyclones and a Raven, and then they play Bio. So there's no, like, uh, Mass Cyclone. There's also not very frequently Cyclone into Mech. It is just they open with eight Cyclones, and then they go into Bio. So apparently they're pretty good in the early game against Terran units, but you do need to get your transition down, because if you don't, you're going to get obliterated by a Marine Tank push. So I was thinking, I could maybe bring back a really cool cheese that I used to do. I actually made a video on this a really long time ago. Like, it was a Terran School episode that was called something like How to Win TVT Without Brain Cells. I, th I think that's... I'm not kidding. I think that's actually what the video was called. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to make Hellions and then you make Marauders and then you drop the Marauders on top of the Cyclone with concussive shells and kill it. It's actually a very cool cheese. It's just because TVT is always very gambly and to play this cheese, you typically have to play very greedy. Like if you want to use this cheese properly, you can't even SCP scout because you don't have minerals for it. So you have to do anything blindly. You would die to any attack yourself. But if you don't, you have a pretty cool cheese. That's why I call it winning TVT without brain cells. Because you just have to ignore every single threat. Just pretend you're fine. Don't pay attention to anything. Close your eyes and just execute the build order. Now, this time I did scout just uh, because I wanted to be a little more safe. But anyway, why I want to try this build again? Because if people use Cyclones more, 
and they are more fragile than before, I feel like the Marauder drop should be able to pack a pretty big punch. Now, it could be a problem when I run into... Um, oh, he's actually going to run this way. No. Well, he tried to run that way. Let's see. Can I get him? Oh, I can still get him, actually. That's nice. Here we go. Just going to lower this depot. There's a little bit of ping, so I hope that that little bit of ping is not going to disturb me. No, it's not. And we are going to kill a Reaper. Uh, but yeah, I do think that the new, uh, or the new Cyclone could suffer against Marauders unless... The new builds mean they have too many Cyclones out. Because before they would have two, right? Because you make them from a tech lab. Now, I I think they could have four, which sounds like an insane amount. I feel like the Medivac would die very fast. But besides that, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Now, I do think I made the tech lab a little bit too late, right? So I did make my first mistake already, which... Yeah, you can't really afford with this kind of builder, so that sucks. Notice how I'm not making an SCV, by the way. That is not a mistake in this case. I just, I can't afford an SCV because everything costs so much money. Like, he Hellions build so fast that you spend so much money building them. Like, uh, look at my money and tell me I would have had money to make an SCV. I'm making two more Hellions right now. You see, I, I went down to pretty much like five minerals, and now I'm scraping by to make this Marauder, right? That I don't want to put on the edge, by the way, because I don't want it to see. And then I have to make this Supply Depot. I, I can't even afford the next to it. Like, this build gets pretty crazy. If I didn't SCV scout, it would have looked a little better. But even then, it definitely would have been pretty tough. Now, I think I'm going to make the Liberator because I have the perfect amount of supply for it. I could have also decided... Uh, wait, well, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's wait for the Marauder first. Did waste my boost there a little bit, so another small mistake. Too much zero space, guys. I'm telling you guys, it's just... I'm absolutely washed up now. No, but here we go. I'm going to rally Marauders and Hellions behind this too. I Oh, that's, that's very likely to be a Cyclone drop, I think. I don't think he wants to drop them because he doesn't want to lock onto the Medivac. I, I'm, I'm fairly sure that's what's going on. I would say there are Cyclones inside there, but he doesn't want to drop them. Because then he locks onto my Medivac and my Cyclones lock onto his Cyclones. That's what would happen. Let's see what we can find here. So there's a lot of stuff. Oh, oh, he had... What is that? Five? He had five already. Now the Marauders are actually popping off against these things, though. Yo, look at these Marauders against the Cyclones. They are pretty crazy. Can I save both of these? Hope so. That would be quite nice. Let's see. Gonna keep trying the Micro. Gonna get another kill. Oh, he has a Raven already as well. Yeah. He, okay, this was... I'm really glad that we did this, even though it failed, because we could tell that with the new builds, they clearly just have way too many Cyclones too early, right? Because he had... He had almost as many Cyclones? Can you th I, that's actually insane. He had almost as many Cyclones as I had Hellions. Like, actually. Because he had... He had five Cyclones and I had six Hellions in his base. That's freaking crazy. Now, what am I going to do as a follow-up? I don't know. I'm going to see if he's in his base. He's probably going to attack me with the Cyclones if I have to guess. Uh, let's see. Okay, okay, I hope he wasn't paying attention. Now he's going to F2 into the main, hopefully. Let's see. Send those bad boys into the main base. And then I'm going to run by. I'm going to re-siege this one real quick. Uh, no, okay. He did see these Hellions most likely. Now, what am I going to do as a follow-up? I, I actually have no idea, to be honest. Let's see. Can I siege them in a good enough spot? He also has the Raven to counterattack me with. No, I, I was trying to sneak his uh, his units there. I, guys, I'm getting too crazy, but I feel like playing mass Vikings because he's making Cyclones, and we know that landed Vikings are really good against them. Am I really good? I'm going to end up playing Viking Marauder tank here, which is just freaking ridiculous. I, I, I don't know why I'm like this. I'm pretty, I, I just mentioned that I wanted to, you know, actually get rank one, and then I'm out here. Uh, wait, can I? I can probably kill one of these if he's not going to pay attention. He's going to lose that. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. He's going to have to use an auto turret as well. And he lost two SCVs. Yeah, that Liberator kind of popped off, not going to lie. But all right, what is the situation of the game? I, 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 I don't know. Oh, no. He had a couple of Cyclones rallied behind because they came from the main base. Otherwise, that would have been quite nice for us. Would have been able to get a decent run by. Because at least we were wasting a little bit of his time. Yo, these mar... If I get stim for these Marauders, they could absolutely pop off against the Cyclones, though. But, okay, I, I don't think he's going to expect this super weird army composition. I'm going to make another command center. And then I guess after this, I'm going to be playing mech. Dude, it's... I'm not sure if it's just playing like another RTS a lot that's enhanced my creativity or or my insanity, but it's it's either of those for sure because I, I copy this at your own risk. Okay, I'll just, I'll just say that copy it at your own risk. Now I have Stim. Okay, let's see. Wait, I don't think he saw the Marauders. Oh, now he sees my units. He's probably like, "What the hell is this?" Wait, he's gonna go for it. He's crazy. These Marauders have Stim, guys. These Marauders are gonna pop off so freaking hard, though. He did have a good amount of turrets, but look at the Marauders. Absolutely slice and dice the cycles. It is crazy. They're all gonna die. He wasted all of his energy as well. I think we just found a composition that absolutely destroys this cyclone strategy. Look at this. He wants to come back, 
But if he does come back, the medevac will probably get shot down uh, by these freaking Vikings. Let's see if I can touch that. Even those cyclos are going to die, even though they were so low HP. Oh, I do need to be careful with these. Maybe I should uh, get these landed, actually. Should have done that a little bit faster. Not quite going to be able to target the next one. Uh, okay, I do need to be careful. You know what? I'm going to make more barracks and just spam marauders like an absolute baboon. That's the plan. So I'm going to land this now. Let's see. He's not quite here yet. Okay, so the thing here is, guys, he has a lot of ravens. Um, and ravens with the interference matrix are slowly going to get better and better against the tanks. Like, my tanks here are what's keeping me alive, right? But he doesn't even have a base. Okay, well, that's interesting. Well, in that case, I think I'm just going to land the Vikings and just steal in front of his base. I, I, I have four bases. Well, not, not yet, but you guys know what I mean. I'm, I'm landing my fourth base soon, and he's still chilling here. Don't tell me he also took the gold. Okay, thank goodness. Maybe I'm traumatized from the last one. Yeah, he's using an interference mage, but the landed Vikings are so insane against the Cyclos. Look at this. These landed Vikings have basically no counter here. And there we go. We're even up massively in supply. Guys, why did this strategy look strong? That is really not... That is just not what it's supposed to be. So we're even in workers, right? My third base is going to be a little bit... Judging by the money, my third base is going to be a little faster. He does technically have better units than me, but they still need to be used properly because I have the Liberator on the offense and the Hellions. But this was pretty cool. This game makes me wonder if maybe you should actually play Marauders against the Cyclone stuff. Because the Marauders own them so freaking hard. They have way less opportunity to do damage. That is true. You can't drop two Marauders in someone's base and kill all of their workers. That's sadly not going to happen. But this was a beautiful game. Let's go for game number three. All right, the third game is against Green, a Zerg player, which gives us one of each race, which is nice. Now, okay, we got Terran again. It's another Terran episode, guys. Here you go. Random keeps being uh, truly random, I suppose. Uh, wait, what did I just want to say? Oh, yeah. So, one thing that does sadden me just a little bit is that my MMR doesn't show in the loading screen. Not, not necessarily for any, like, tangible reason, I guess. I just think it's pretty cool if my MMR shows up. Like, there's a random logo and a player that's above 6k MMR. Like, it's just, it's so rare that it looks very cool. So, that's one thing that I do miss. Now, after playing absolutely absurd in the last two games, um, can I one-up it? That's the question. Now, I did have a strategy in mind that I wanted to do against Zerg, which was... I, I, actually, I might have explained it before. Uh, you see, guys, the Zero Space is getting to my head, I'm telling you. I don't even know what I'm doing with StarCraft anymore now, but I think three years ago, that sounds like the right time frame, about three years ago, there was a relatively popular strategy popularized by Cure, one of the best Korean Terran players, which was to go for really flash Drilling Claws and just do Drilling Claw Mind Drops against Zerg and then go into Bio. And then I took that to the next level and played Drilling Claw Mind Jobs into Mech, just because I like to be extra crazy. So I was wondering if I could play Drilling Claw Mind Jobs into Cyclones. Um, and that strategy might actually be better, because by far, the biggest problem with the Drilling Claw Mind Drop into Mech build is that you just die to a massive Roach attack. Um, just to explain that a little further, I know Widow Mines are known to be very good defense, but they are good defense in a certain way like you can't defend with just widow mines because you will just die like you can't mass widow mines to defend because a couple units will just trigger all of them if they're too clumped up they could even die like five of them to a little group of bailing stuff like that and then you don't have any other force to defend with but if you can make cyclones and tanks because normally you can't really make good defensive units from the reactor factory but now since you can make cyclones from a reactor factory that kind of changes a little bit it looks like my opponent uh, is playing... Yeah, he almost has 100 gas already. He's doing something a little cheeky, I think, guys. I'm just... I'm, I'm getting a little little cheeky vibe from this guy. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know why. It, it seems like a normal hatchery and stuff, but it's just... Something about it looks off to me. I feel like he's going to try to run 100 million Zerglings into our base or something like that. So I guess what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Heli and Banshee. Then go into Drilling Claw with the Mines. And then go into Cyclone Mech. That's the plan. Wait, did I play? Yeah, actually, I'm going to end up playing mech in every single game. That's kind of surprising. Oh, he, he's going to let me kill these Zerglings. I know I'm 10 HP, but I will kill these Zerglings with my Reaper if he really wants me to. There we go. I got all of them. Survive on 2 HP. Put on my sunglasses, dip out, drop some nasty one-liner like they used to do in... Um, what was that show called that my mom always used to watch? CSI. CSI Miami. I forgot the name of the guy, but he would always put on his sunglasses and he would say, like, it's a kind of one-liner. And there would be, like, this scream from the show, like, Ow! 
<laughs> I've met a couple of you know exactly what I'm talking about. I, I, I'm sure 100% there's a video on YouTube that's like one hour, 10 minutes or 30 minutes of this guy's one-liners or something like that. Like 100%, I'm sure. That's what I felt like with that Reaper. Now, I did take a third base here, um, which I guess, I guess shouldn't surprise me because even if you do cheese with Zerg, you do usually take a third base. I, I still don't even know why I think he's cheesing me, but it just it just feels that way. That's like uh, really the only way I can explain it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these Helenes at home. I'm gonna make my third commands in, in the wall. That's a, that's actually a normal thing to do, but it's also nice when you're gonna get rushed. The time for me to scout with my Reaper has arrived though. I think I'm gonna distract him with these Helenes just a little bit. There we go, hit the queen, move over there so he can see the Hellion movement, exactly. And then the Reaper is going to jump into the main and hopefully show me everything that, okay. Well, he, I guess he wants me to scout him because he's not. And exactly, there we go. That's why I scouted 345, guys. I'm telling you. That's why I scouted 340 freaking 5. So you can see that Roach Warren. Um, this is an important tell. Or an important, like, extra read, I should say. Is that there are no extra gases being built. A, a proper Roach all in has three gases. Which means that at least one of them has to be in the natural, unless he took this one, which I don't think I've ever seen someone do, but it would admittedly be pretty cool. So I think he could still either cancel the Roach Warren, or he could just continue with Roaches, but it not being a committal attack as well. I think I'm just going to patrol this Banshee over here. Uh, I could make Cyclones. I guess that would make sense for me to do. Uh, but I think I'm okay with just the Banshee. I did play two base Banshee instead of three base Banshee after all. Now let's see if there's something I can find. There are no units here whatsoever. Yeah, okay, he's making drones. How many links does he have? Okay, he does have enough links. I thought it was not going to be enough. Though he's taking a lot of damage in this choke, though. That is a very painful lineup for the Zerglings. And now they are going to stay around. I'm going to be able to chase the drones. Okay, they're lined up perfectly. Let me get a big shot one. No, barely not going to get it. Okay, that would have been freaking beautiful. But good defense by my opponent, of course. And now um, I'm going to put this one on a reactor. Gonna wait for the armory to finish. Now, he did have a couple of roaches, but I'm quite sure that they're just gonna be uh, chill defensive roaches more than anything else. Let's see. I guess I could make one round of Cyclone just to kind of pretend I'm doing something else with the reactor on the factory. Then I'm gonna make drilling claws. Let's see. There must be. Nah, I, I don't wanna risk it because those queens would do too much damage. I can always just chill here for a little bit and do the damage with these banshees. Let's see. Make sure I don't go into the spore range. Oh, this is actually so freaking nasty. If he doesn't have. Um, a lair for an overseer you can just cap that forever and that's painful i always like to make an extra spore there when i'm zerg look at this these badges are popping off so hard right now they already have like 50 kills i believe there's the overseer showing up a little bit late but look at the amount of work that's actually disgusting how much is it it is 21 i believe i think it's at 8 and 30 that is a ridiculous amount of worker kills i'm gonna be able to kill even more this is not the amount of damage that banshees are supposed to do guys believe me i know banshees can be pretty good but they're not supposed to kill 25 workers like that like holy cow that is nuts now what am i gonna do with my money exactly should i be going for a 5cc setup like this is some kind of limited challenge i think it's not even that crazy because i have a lot of money extra because i am playing mech after all uh let's see is he gonna move across no he's not moving across then i'm gonna gonna just gonna keep making widow mines here and drop them in his base with drilling claws i guess a couple tanks would be nice let's make sure i get this wall off completely so I don't get caught off guard by some kind of bailing run by. I think moving across with this little squad here uh, could be a nice additional mind game by me. Gonna go for a second armory, get a couple extra factories. Yo, the flow of this build is very nice, I have to say. Like, the build flows very well. These are drilling claws, guys. They're gonna shoot super fast. Look at this. Oh, that is brutal. That's the entire mineral I got, pretty much. And I'm gonna save these as well. I should definitely be uh, making some more safety units like tanks, though. I, I think my uh, little squad over here definitely... Um, how do you call it? Distracted him pretty well. So that is really nice. Let's see. Can I come across? Don't see anything yet. These Hellenes are going to go into this base. Like the way I'm playing this, I have so many different opportunities to harass. And that is really, really cool. That is exactly uh, the style I like to play in Stark. I'm actually going to wait with these a little bit. I think I'm going to wait for him to um, 
drag away the units to one of these widow mine drops and then i'll get in there maybe i can even even hit like a really nice two one timing attack here okay so here is the widow mine drop number two but well, like they drop so fast you need to react super fast to deal with that now i'm gonna drop again here as you see he just f2 his units over there oh my god this is brutal i think i'm gonna kill every single drone again and then i'm gonna go in here i can even walk these away actually because why the hell not i might as well save them let's see is there drones over here to kill ah oh, there's not i've killed too many drones guys i guess i can at least save these uh, for a little bit i didn't save these with mine so i'm gonna bring this medevac back can i save this hellion yes i can man this has been uh pretty much a perfect game so far like this is very very satisfying there there's one trick uh or not not necessarily a trick there's one strategy that i always really like and that is going for mech doom drops. You guys remember that I had a mech drop to Grandmaster series? I always liked doing that strategy against high level Zerks because I could see the potential in it. Like it's not like it was amazing, but there was definitely something there, you know? Like it could have worked that maybe this is the strategy that I need to do. Okay, this time I'm not even dropping them. I'm just walking them in. This almost feels a little disrespectful to just walk them in there. Like, okay, you're gone and bye. Let's see. So he's going to see this planetary now. He's definitely not going to be super happy with it. I can tell you guys that much. I'm gonna go over here. He's dropping creep, but I already have it. Oh, that is painful. Actually, I, I don't mind if he uses the bailings for that. Let's see. Oh, I can drop them behind. Are they gonna get a shot off? Barely not. Oh, that would have been freaking beautiful. No idea why that tank is there, but I guess... Uh, oh, why is he dropping them on both my... Did he think I was on two bases? I'm on four, my friend. I guess I'll make a turret on each side of that overlord. So he's gonna go for bailings. Uh, very notable that he didn't have a hive yet of course like hive is really what you want against mech um actually I, i'm gonna i'm gonna bring my widow mines with the push i was considering dropping them but i'm gonna bring them with the push this time I feel like it could be quite nice for me some really good position in here for tanks gonna keep these on the low ground uh he's just mining from this uh rich gas base he doesn't even have the gas yet so that is nice get this one over here as well uh, i didn't get the upgrade yet for the cyclones that's definitely a little bit of a mistake Start saturating this base, get another one over here as well. Like, he has a decent amount of stuff. Uh, in particular, the bailings is what I'm scared of. So I want to make sure I don't take, like, really big hits from the bailings. I mean, if I can just kite like this, the trades are always going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to try doing some mech multi-prongs. I know it's very rare, but I feel like it would be a pretty good strategy if I also try to hit the top side at the same time. There's still a widow mine there. Actually, a couple of widow mines. He did bait one of them successfully already. So that is well done by him. I know I have a couple tanks just uh, moving up to the top here slowly. I can tell by the speed on the minimap. Let's see, I'm just going to get more and more bases as well. I do like the fact that he's trying to block my bases with uh, with overlords. But just the fact that I already had that make it just not that good. But it is pretty well done by him. Let's see, can I micro the weak ones back? Yeah, it's actually not that bad. It's like a war prison. Look at this war prison micro by me. Okay, that's a couple too many roaches. These units are super flimsy after all. Let's dip with these. And now wait, I'm actually going to try siege. So the, the drones can't escape. Look at this. I'm actually going to try siege up here. Yeah, he's not paying attention because he's going all in here. These widow mines are still providing so much coverage. And now these drones are pretty much already dead, man. This has been one of the coolest mech games I have ever played, I think. Like, this is freaking awesome. I think even I lost the plot a little bit at some point, to be fair. But it is still going pretty well. So can I complain? Can I get my units around there? Let's see. He's trying to make some ravagers. I think I'm just going to finish him off with the big play. Uh, I don't want these uh, these tanks to die. Wait, oh, I couldn't build a turret there. I'm trying to get this overlord to leave just with turrets. Do I have enough medevacs for all of this crap? I think barely not, probably. But I'm going to go for it anyway. These widow mines, I'm all going to be walking them into the mineral line. And our opponent just gives up. Look at that, guys. 183 against 95 supply. And this was just like the good old days of mech drops to good basher. Like, this was freaking brutal. 4.8k resources lost against 10.6. And that is going to make for a very nice episode. I did lose a little bit of mmr it's probably going to be minus 20 or minus 15 or so because the first game did give me a minus 40 second game was like plus 20 ish and this one's going to be like plus four so it should be about minus 16 i think but there we go not even a hive yet i already had like eight command centers mass mech very very happy with this definitely going to try this strategy later perfect it a little more and i hope you guys enjoyed me playing starcraft against for once you must have missed me for this brutal week without you thermal playing starcraft 2 himself but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did get a video like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you for the next one Adiós.